المريضة كانت كثير متخوفة كثير قلقانة هذا الوضع كان شوي صعب عليها وعلى العائلة You're at a risk of developing meningitis. من أسوأ الحالات ممكن تصير التهاب السحايا المنينجايتس وهذا التهاب ما بنقدر نتوقع إيش يصير مع المريض. Figure out where she was leaking this fluid. It needed to be repaired surgically. The best option is to go for surgery. What's going to happen with my girls? I. I've got an old mother. I've got two girls. I don't want to die. I don't know if I should go through this. My story starts with uh, down in December 2020, um, my nose on the right hand side started dripping clear fluid and I thought it was just general cold which was happening to me because of the winter. It kept going on for a few months, I ignored it, didn't really think it was uh, any concern. So the patient uh, presented to us with a one year history of uh, leaking of clear fluid from the right side of her nose. Uh, patients uh, usually think that they, they have an allergy, but it's really not an allergy and actually cerebral spinal fluid leaking through their nose. I was shocked to suddenly see a very big leak of fluid down on the top of my shirt and we really got concerned. Myself and my husband, we immediately um, went to the, to the doctor to see what could have happened. كان يكون عندها وجع راس وهذا احد الاعراض من سيلان السائل النخاعي وهذا السائل هو السائل اللي بيغطي الدماغ اللي بيحمي الدماغ والمفروض انه يكون مغلق لكن اذا صار في فتحه صغيره دخلت على الانف هذا بصير ينزل للانف وبصير المريض يشتكي من اعراض احنا دائما بنحكيها مرض برد او حساسيه او كذا لكن عاده هي بتكون بجهه واحده دائمه بالذات عند الركوع سجود ميلان للأمام هذه الأمور بتكون طبعا الماء بينزل بكثرة أكثر. And the problem with uh, having a cerebral spinal fluid leak is that uh, you're at a risk of developing meningitis. So it's a serious problem. تشخيص نعم نادر بشكل عام يعني يحصل حوالي خمسة من كل مئة ألف شخص بشكل عام ليش بعض الناس ممكن يصير عندهم هاي المشكلة اللي تراما اللي هي ضربة على الرأس أو أثناء حادث السيارة أو وقوع هذا ممكن يسبب كسر في قاع الجمجمة ويسبب السيلان. Figure out where she was leaking this fluid from. We then got a thin cut CT scan. Of the sinuses as well as the as MRI of the brain, and we found that she had a small defect, about a three millimeter defect, in the, along the anterior skull base. The الأشعة المقطعية عملتها هنا في كليفلينك لينك أبو ظبي لأنه هاي من نحتاجها وبنستعمل ال منسميها إيش النافيجيشن يعني إحنا بنستخدم هاي الأشعة المقطعية اللي نعملها بالتصوير خلال العملية عشان لأنه من قرر بتساعدنا على يعني إيجاد المكان الرئيسي للتسيل. When Dr. Mehdi uh, showed me the images from the MRI and CT scan and broke it to me that uh, I have to do the surgery uh, because there is no other option. Here we're looking at a CT scan, okay, and this is the MRI. If you look here on the right side, you lose that column of air, you know, so that means maybe there is some fluid in there, and that's probably coming from around the brain down to the nose, okay. 
That's why we complement that with the MRI. She was obviously extremely worried and extremely anxious um, about both the requirement for surgery and the possible complications that could occur. She was more concerned about the uh, side effects, what happened after that, you know, when we think about brain. So there are thousands of things comes up here. I've got an old mother. I've got two girls. I told it. I, I don't know if I should go through this. confirmed that it was a leak on the skull base uh, of my um, brain membrane which was leaking fluid and um, thereafter I was told to go ahead with the surgery because if I wouldn't I would go into a bigger problem which was maybe some infection, meningitis, other issues of continuous headaches and health problems. Well, I can tell you the success rate of these surgeries is really high in, in, in good experienced hands. Uh, as high as, I can say 94%, you know, I cannot say, could be, you know, even probably our number is even better, but we say in the literature, we quote about 94%. At uh, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi is that we have a multidisciplinary team, we have a world-class uh, skull base uh, center, we review all our films, and uh, in, in her case, uh, we decided that uh, she indeed had a defect in the anterior skull base and that it needed to be repaired surgically. We've checked everything else. I mean, I think you don't have any of these big signs of in benign intracranial hypertension. You know, so I think, you know, safely I would say, you know, we can do the surgery and basically will be it, you know, and you'll be I, on, the, on, the, on the safe I, side. I can trust you and go through it and come back to my kids. And, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to be able to trust you because we've been talking, me and my husband, we've been talking a lot about this and I think we want to go ahead with this. Okay. And inshallah. I just hope I'm going to come back to my family. Inshallah. And our job at Cleveland. My daughter gave me this uh, little bracelet and told me, Mommy, you're going to be well soon and she's eight years old and uh, she wrote, I love you and that. patient's uh, case, we decided that uh, we would treat, we would attempt repairing the skull base defect through the nose, is doing it uh, using an endoscope. So the operation lasted approximately four hours um, and Aram was uh, put under general anesthesia to have the surgery done. As anesthesiologists, we focus on the whole patient, uh, so we are kind of big picture physicians focusing on the fact that the human body likes to operate around certain fixed levels, fixed norms, both for heart rate, blood pressure, temperature. In the case of the work, it takes about 4 or 5 hours, about the work. We have to open the tube, نحرك أغشية مخاطية أفيدها يعني يعني كثير من العمل دقيق عشان تزيد من نسبة نجاح العملية. The surgery is a collaborative effort between ENT and neurosurgery. Uh, my ENT colleagues perform the initial part of the surgery, uh, gaining access through the nose. The neurosurgeon's role is then to is to expose the defect of the anterior skull base, and together we repair the the defect.
the patient doing? Doctor, good afternoon. Good so afternoon. the patient is doing well over the night. This is the first day post-operatively, post-endoscopic CSF leak repair. So the patient has two marisol packs on the right side with mustache dressing, no bleeding over the night. At the same time, she complains of headaches with dairy eye on the, ref on the right side. But all, it's um, improved with the analgesics that we give. Okay. Um, no fever overnight? No fever Tolerating overnight. Tolerating diet, okay, yes. no issues. Uh, no nausea, vomiting, no. any of that stuff. Just the headaches. Is she on PRN for that stuff, for nausea? She yes, there is PRN okay. medications. For and she's still on bed rest? Yes, okay. Okay, all right. So let's go and see her then, see how she's doing. Mrs. Iram, how are you doing? Feel tired probably, we just finished the surgery. We're just gonna just get a blood pressure quickly and then we'll talk uh, more about the surgery. Let's go ahead, uh, Mitch, see if we can get the pressure. Make sure everything's okay. So just uh, wanna get the blood pressure, but uh, you know, Mrs. Iram, everything really went well during surgery, uh, I can tell you. The good news is we're able to find uh, where is the uh, leak and the right side and we were able to close it with uh, just uh, tissue from inside the nose. So luckily, alhamdulillah, we did not have to do any other major surgeries, making any opening from uh, above. So we were very glad we were able to do everything and successfully, and we think we got it, all right? My understanding is that the Ram made a full recovery and is back to leading a normal life with her family. الحمد لله طبعا كتب لها عمر جديد والحمد لله انا فخور اني قدرت اقنعها لانه لما هي اجت هي وزوجها على الاكيد هي ما كانت مقتنعه بشكل بشغل العمليه. The problem with having a cerebrospinal fluid leak is that it exposes the patient to the risk of meningitis because you have a communication between the, between the nose and the brain, a direct communication. Well, the ability to correct this defect through a minimally invasive approach uh, clearly significantly reduced the risk of complications and both the duration of surgery and the length of recovery that Iran would be exposed to. So it's a great achievement for both the patient and the hospital that we were able to, uh, to deliver the, ca the care in which we did. The patient tolerated the procedure, surgery was successful, we were able to close the skull base defect and stop the CSF leak. <laughs> Uh, the CSF leak was having a significant impact not only on her life but the life of her family. By being able to offer this treatment, uh, we've allowed her to return to a normal life uh, and to enjoy life to the full. She will be very soon playing with the kids, enjoying the life. So that's, that's the thing which is uh, uh, put us back on the track, inshallah. I didn't want to think I'm not going to come back to my girls. Um, I've got two children and I thought I'm never going to be able to come back to them. Mm -hmm.